Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and I'm bringing you the second Fire and Maneuver Faction Guide. For today, we're taking a look at the extremely unique faction that is the Ottoman Empire. Now, I do have to preface this by saying that currently I am actually on a beta branch of the Fire and Maneuver game, the public testing one, which has introduced a variety of changes. Notably, there have been cost changes to a variety of different units. Some other units have had some reworks to them. And most notably, the skirmish trait has been reworked. So keep that all in mind, as I expect that this will probably be relevant in the future. And if I didn't do it here, then we would probably have an outdated guide in just a week or two. So if you're watching this when it's going up, just be aware that this video is actually a bit more that you're going to have to wait a week or two in order to really uh, maybe utilize some of this content. Regardless, if you like today's video, make sure to like and subscribe as I'm going to be doing a variety of videos on all of the new fact on all of the factions within Fire and Maneuver covering them. Otherwise, uh, we can just jump right into it. The Ottoman faction is described as a difficult, offensive, and expendable force. Fill the battlefield with your forces comprising of seemingly endless tide of militiamen, including the bizarre Bashi Bazooks, known in the West as the Crazy Heads. But beware the lack of discipline endemic to Ottoman armies. Expendable is definitely a very apt term for the Ottomans. Among all of the factions within Fire Maneuver, they have the cheapest army roster, bar none. However, this also is accomplished by pretty much all of their units being burdened by several negative traits. The Ottomans is a faction that has to absolutely build in a quantity-based mindset, because they are able to bring just the largest armies of any faction, but those armies are generally going to be on the weak end. This is a very different playstyle than what a lot of other factions can do. Even a faction like Russia can still build itself in a way that brings about some amount of quality, but the Ottomans do not really have that option. They don't have a lot of heavy infantry, and even their best line infantry are still sporting negative perks, meaning that they will generally lose out to European armies that just have even basic infantry. This is offset by the fact, again, by their low cost, but also by the fact that there's a serious amount of melee units in there. Notably, those Bashi Bazooks that are mentioned are a very powerful unit, being very cheap with shock. So let's go ahead and jump into the early period and talk about the units available, their roles, and then also how to build the Ottomans in the early period. So, in the early period, the Ottomans have a small armory made up of a standard smoothbore gun, a rifled variant, a saber for cavalry, and a carbine for cavalry. Then hopping over into the infantry, we start off with the Rediff infantry. These are militia that are 6 health, 3 cohesion with disorganized and breakable. They are pretty much some of the cheapest infantry you can find in the game, but they do also have such a poor combination of traits that they're just not going to hold their own weight in combat. Their best use is in reserve, being able to potentially join a melee without needing to take any damage themselves. That adds, a, for a very cheap cost, can add you some extra damage in a melee. They also can be decent at holding flanks, uh, notably being able to, for example, form square and then be able to zone out enemy cavalry or even just locking down a position for a little time so you don't get... The enemy does not get free movement on a flank. Then you have the Bashi Bazook. These are probably one of the more iconic units of the Ottoman forces. Uh, they are another militia unit that has 6 health and 3 cohesion, but they have shock and disorganized. They are definitely a lot more powerful than the Rediff. Without breakable, they are much more capable in melee, essentially being 
the standard of any other unit. Their low cohesion is a bit of a problem in that regard, but shock means that if used correctly, these guys can be extremely cheap and spammed, and you'll just have so many opportunities to charge the enemy down that they will eventually break somewhere, which is, again, kind of leaning into that overall theme of the Ottomans, which is spamming. Then you get the Turkish Line Infantry. It is a line infantry that is 6 health and 4 cohesion. However, it has the breakable trait, meaning that this unit will take 1 damage at the end of a turn if it does not have any cohesion. The Turkish Line Infantry are on the cheap end compared to most other line units, but breakable does mean they are not very good in melee or close quarters combat. If they're able to stay at range with rifles and shoot, then you essentially have a line infantry that is just cheaper. But if you commit at all to melee with them or the enemy gets aggressive, then Turkish line infantry can very quickly start melting away compared to their other enemies. You also have the Egyptian line infantry. These are a different version of the line infantry with 6 health and 4 cohesion. They have disorganized and rugged. Now, the Egyptians are a little bit more powerful than the Turkish in terms of getting close and hugging the enemy. Without breakable, these units will be much more capable of simply staying near the enemy and fighting in close-range combat. And in fact, disorganized encourages this aggressive behavior. Because disorganized is mainly a downside if you're sitting at range shooting at each other because you have a slower cohesion uh, regeneration. So, by getting close you, and denying the enemy the ability to regain their cohesion, you essentially negate the downside of disorganized. On top of that, the Egyptians also have rugged, which allows them to potentially play sneaky flanks or take up position in something like a forest or otherwise rugged terrain, giving them potentially some additional defenses and just overall being a lot more nimble on the battlefield. Now, this does come at a cost increase, you are paying about 15 more points for the Egyptian line infantry, so you do have to take that into account, especially if you're building a very large army with them. They will very quickly start to drain your funds. And then we round off the infantry tab in the early period with rifles. These are a light infantry that have 4 health, 3 cohesion, and then disorganized and skirmishing. Now, the skirmishing trait has been reworked in this... Uh, beta that I am in and it is likely this is what is going to go out so just keep in mind that again if you're watching this right as it comes out this is going to be sort of a future-proofed video and might not apply exactly now but regardless rifles are very cheap in terms of getting a rifled gun if you give them smoothbores they are 60 points only five more po or ten more points than the rediff infantry and for 90 points on a rifle, that can give them a fair bit of usability. On top of that, the new skirmishing trait can potentially allow them to play in a very interesting way. Being immune to flanking fire, which is that bonus damage you get for shooting people from the side or the rear, rifles are a lot more durable and can potentially be played a bit aggressively, especially due to their low cost. You could potentially bring a large conglomerate of them and then just swarm the enemy wrapping around them, and simply just overwhelming them with large numbers. The disorganized is probably the biggest knock against them, as their low cohesion means that essentially once they get shot at a couple times, uh, they're going to start losing all their cohesion and taking health damage. So they definitely do not hold out very long in combat, but they can still potentially be a useful tool, especially if you're just looking for cheap ranged firepower, which they are the cheapest in terms of having rifles uh, in the games, or pretty much within the faction, so that is nice. Then we get to the cavalry tab, which is very large. We start off with mounted rifles. These are 4 health, 3 cohesion cavalry. They have 3 movement because they're light cavalry, and then they have disorganized and skirmishing. These guys notably come pre-equipped with the carbine, but if you don't take it, they're 150 points. That's relatively on the cheap side. Now, 3 health and 4 cohesion is quite low for a cavalry unit, but for paying 180 to have a mobile shooter, they could potentially provide an interesting option. Then you have the Bashi Bazook Cavalry. 
These are potentially very, very powerful cavalry. Again, only having four health and three cohesion, they have the three movement speed, but they contain shock and disorganized. The Bashi Bazook cavalry are, well, essentially Bashi Bazooks as a horse. They're very quick to move, and that shock is devastating. Their low cost at 150 makes them one of the cheapest shock cavalry in the game, and it can make them very, very hard hitting and easy to fit into a comp. Of all the nations, the Ottomans are one of the nations that can lean the most into cavalry, and it's possible to have multiple cavalry units in a build without completely destroying your budget. You also have Lancers, which are a, another light cavalry with 6 health, 3 cohesion, and 3 movement. They have shock, disorganized, and breakable. Compared to the Bashi Bazooks, these guys are having 2 more health, but come with the downside of breakable, which is an interesting trade-off. The additional health can be very useful in that they're able to potentially survive a fire at will and get that crucial charge off, but breakable also means that they are overall a bit worse in terms of melee combat, as once their cohesion is gone, which three cohesion very easily disappears, uh, means that these lancers will start to take additional damage in melee, meaning that they can very often be killed after that one charge. This still, though, for 15 points, it's a bit down to how you want to build yourself as to whether the Bashi Bazooks or the Lancers are a more appealing option to you, with each having small benefits. You also have the Cossacks. These are 4 health, 3 cohesion, like cavalry, and have shock, skirmishing, and disorganized. Now, the Cossacks are... I would say among some of the strongest light cavalry available to the Ottomans. They are 25 more points than the Bashi Bazooks, but they do have the skirmishing trait, which does prevent them from taking additional damage from fire at will shots, which can be relatively useful. And unlike the Lancers, they do not have breakable. They are overall definitely on the more expensive side, and if you look to take a Cossacks, you might only want to take one of them and then continue to spam out your other units. Although, I have seen some crazy builds that do take double Cossacks, because they're overall one of the more effective cavalry. But, again, it kind of just comes down to how you're looking to build. If you have the money, Cossacks are just better than the Bashi Bazooks. But if you're looking very budget-wise, it might be better to pick up some Bashi Bazooks or even some Lancers, depending on what you're looking for. Then we move on to the Heavy Cavalry, which starts off with the Dragoons. These are 6 health, 4 cohesion Heavy Cavalry, meaning they have 2 speed. They have Disorganized and Breakable. This unit is arguably one of the cheapest cavalry just in the game outright. 110 points is cheaper than most infantry and that is for a cavalry unit. However, Dragoons are also arguably some of the weakest. Due to the fact that they have the two speed, they're not as nimble as light cavalry, and the combination of disorganized and breakable means that the heavy cavalry's main benefit is usually their high cohesion and higher health totals don't really mean much here, as both of the traits work against that. If you're looking for a very cheap artillery, or a very cheap Cavalry Dragoons are an option, as you can actually give them Carbines, and they're still 140 points, which is not much more expensive than, say, an infantry with rifles. But the combination of multiple bad perks can make them quite weak in terms of getting into melee, and might just make them too unreliable to use. And then you also have the Cuirassier. These are another form of Heavy Cavalry, with 6 health, 5 cohesion, they have the two speed, and then they have melee drill, disorganized, and breakable. The Cuirassiers are definitely a fair bit more expensive than the Dragoons, having a 170 price tag. However, melee drill and the additional cohesion point means that the Cuirassier is overall a more useful unit, especially if it can get into melee. Although it will die relatively quickly due to breakable, the melee drill means that it will be more likely to get off its damage and maybe even kill a unit. 
They also do come pre-equipped with the carbine if you would want that, but honestly, I would recommend largely keeping them with the saber and saving those 30 points for giving an infantry a rifle or something similar. Then we move on to the artillery. Starting off, we have an 8-pound field artillery. It has 6 health, 2 cohesion, and 3 range. And then it has 4 traits on it. Cumbersome, anti-personnel, disorganized, and breakable. The field artillery is essentially super cheap, but really bad. However, unlike many other units, artillery is generally not going to be suffering from the disorganized or the breakable nearly as much. Notably, if the enemy is right next to your field artillery and breakable is actually happening, you're probably losing that artillery piece anyway. So it's important to keep that in mind in that if you're using artillery in an efficient manner, then traits like breakable and disorganized actually don't matter that much. And that can be very, very powerful because that means that they're just outright cheaper than most other options for nations. That being said, this basic 8-pound field artillery is not very good. Costing 105 points is pretty much its only benefit in that you could very easily fit one of these in here. This is especially true if you're on a map like, say, Sarbrooken, where you do need to bring some amount of artillery in order to break the hard cover. But if you're not doing that, then I would honestly avoid the 8-pound field artillery. You also have the 11 pound field artillery it has six health two cohesion four range and then all the same perks cumbersome anti-personnel disorganized and breakable this is going to be a standard thing for most of the artillery uh, but the field artillery is a little bit better with four range it does definitely go up quite a bit in cost costing 160 compared to 105 so you're paying 55 more points for it however the additional range does mean that it is going to be a little safer and can more reliably assist you as needed. Uh, if I were to take an Ottoman artillery piece, then this would also not be one I would generally take. Uh, just the main thing is always just the low movement speed. These units just struggle to keep pace with your armies, and it would, I would have to find a very specific map, like say Sarbrooken, where I could put this on a crucial hill and then have it support my army uh, in an important manner. The 4-pound horse artillery is a bit of a different story, though. Again, 6, co six health, 2 cohesion, 3 range, and also 2 speed. It has cumbersome, anti-personnel, disorganized, and breakable, as with most other of the, the artillery. The biggest benefit of the 4-pound horse artillery is that 2 movement. These are actually, I think, the much more efficient Ottoman artillery piece, and one of the best ones that the Ottomans has in the early period. The two movement speed just makes it so much easier for these guns to get into the important positions and assist your army as needed, while also being able to get out of danger should the enemy aggressively pull off a flank or try to dive and kill your artillery. You are paying, a again, a price increase costing about 45 more points than the basic 8-pounder, but you do get a lot of flexibility and just overall will get more use out of you out of the... Uh, to movement speed that this horse artillery offers. And then we get to the final artillery, the 25-pound Houtzer. This unit has 6 health, 2 cohesion, and 4 range, and has cumbersome, indirect fire, disorganized, and breakable. I would say that the 25-pound Houtzer is probably one of the best Ottoman artillery pieces, and even though it is the most expensive, the simple fact is, is that indirect fire makes this so much more usable compared to most of the other Ottoman artillery. And the reason for this is that the Ottoman artillery has a bit of a problem in that when you have an army that is just like 10 units and you try to bring an artillery piece... What happens is that your infantry are going to be everywhere on the map and they're going to be blocking the shots of your artillery and you'll have to work carefully in order to allow them to actually have an open field of fire to shoot at enemies. The 25 pound howitzer gets around that by having indirect fire. So you can have this gigantic wave of infantry and overrun the enemy while still having your artillery bombard and soften enemies up. On top of that, four range means that it is a pretty standard range and is on the same tier as the 11 pound field artillery meaning that it is able to just generally be in a safer position and still provide that meaningful support. 
So how do we build the Ottomans in the early period? Well, the build is relatively flexible in what you can do. To start off with, a common strategy that many employ is simply taking all the Bashi bazooks. The extremely cheap shock is extremely lethal, especially when it can be backed up by just completely massive hordes of enemy units. Four shock infantry pretty much allows you to have multiple shock units threatening multiple enemies on the front line, meaning that the enemy will have to be very careful to not get into a really bad charge. Now, the general thing is that they are usually left with just the basic smoothbore in order to avoid them being too expensive, as you don't want to be spending 120 points for a unit that you're essentially going to commit into a melee and then have it charge until it dies. So, generally, this is a basic foundation. And then you follow it up with a mixture of either Turkish line infantry or Egyptian infantry. For this example, we're going to take two of both, although you could do almost any amount. Uh, again, depending on which one you feel you want more of. The Egyptians are better on rugged maps, uh, and also are a bit better in getting close to the enemy, but the Turkish line infantry are superior if you're getting into ranged combat. Now, this is about eight infantry units, which is a decent build-up, and after this, you have a bit of flexibility. You could lean into taking a couple extra infantry and essentially fully committing to having just a absolute horde of various line infantry. This is a potential build and does give you a total of 11 infantry to work with, which is an absolute massive amount. However, you could also look to lean into something like cavalry. As an example, one could go with double Cossacks and the ability to have two cavalry wrapping around the enemy and always threatening a devastating back charge could be very, very strong on the right map. Although you do have to be careful as smarter opponents will be able to counter cavalry and committing over th about 350 points to get them is a bit pricey. So you do have to be careful when going double cavalry, but... The low cost also does mean you can pull it off better than most. There is also the ability to go straight into something like an artillery piece, leaning into something like this, where we essentially just use line Egyptian line infantry and then bring in a 25-pound howitzer, giving us a powerful indirect fire to back up our large amounts of infantry and our bashis. Another potential build is a bit of a different one, uh, and this leans heavily on the fact that rifles are really cheap range units. By taking large amounts of them alongside our standard amount of Bashi, we're able to have almost $500 to spend on a mixture of other units. So we could do something like take a cavalry unit and also a feel a 25 pound howitzer alongside something like a single infantry to round it out. Now this build is a very glass cannon build as you don't have practically any infantry that can fight at range and you will have to be very careful of that but it does allow you to potentially bring in a lot of indirect a lot of different uh, cavalry or artillery options while still retaining some amount of ranged firepower and the aggressive aspect of the Bashi. I would say this build is a little less serious of a, a little less competitive compared to the previous build. The lower health total still makes rifles not the greatest at line, although you could definitely tinker with this and maybe try to fit in a couple extra Turkish line infantry, giving you something similar to this. You'd have to play around with it a bit, but you could try something like that. There is also the one funny meme build that I see people sometimes take, which is you take the cheapest artillery and you just take 11 of them and then you call it a day. And now this build is not going to win you games because as soon as anybody gets anywhere near you, you just die. But it is very funny to have 11 artillery pieces on the board. And if the enemy somehow doesn't manage to get on top of you, you can win. Uh, 
So that's a funny build, but that's completely a meme. Don't do that if you're looking to seriously play. But the first two builds are actually pretty solid. Uh, I've played around with them a bit, and they definitely do put in the work. So now let's hop over to the late period and see how we can do the Ottomans in the late period. The late period brings about quite a bit of changes into the Ottoman armory and their units. The first thing is the fact that they notably get to keep their smoothbore weapons in the late period. This is something that a lot of nations do not get to do. And what it means is that you're able to retain your builds from the early period and your units can be remain very, very cheap. This is a powerful aspect and allows the Ottomans to maintain that very swarmy nature. They also get access to breech loaders, which are powerful tools due to the fact that you are already a very aggressive faction. And being able to shoot two times at close range can put out a lot more damage, making the breech loaders an interesting tool for the Ottomans. You also have a couple rifled breech loaders, which, combined with some of the new units, finally gives you a at least relatively decent ranged unit that can actually do some real damage. And then you can round it out with a standard breech loading carbine, which gives your cavalry a bit more of a meaty punch if they're going to be fighting, and if they're not charging and instead shooting at the enemy. Moving on to the infantry, the first new unit is the Zouave. The Zouave is a line infantry that has 6 health and 4 cohesion, and then contains melee drill and disorganized. The Zouaves are overall a very welcome addition to the Ottoman roster. Due to the fact that you're already usually committing into melee combat, the Zouaves are going to potentially add another aspect by offering the ever-useful melee drill, which allows them to deal extra damage in melee. When combined with something like the Bashi Bazooks, this combination can be very cheap, yet still provide a humongous amount of damage to an enemy if they're unable to stop it. On top of that, the Zouaves themselves sport disorganized and are very similar to the Egyptian line infantry in terms of combat. However, melee drill again allows them better in melee, but they do come at a bit higher of a price because of that. So, the Zouaves occupy an interesting space and are generally similar to the Egyptians, and it comes down to which perk you find more useful. On the right map, Rugged can be more useful, but in general, I find the Zouaves are usually a little bit more uh, powerful. You also get the Imperial Guard, which is the Ottomans' only heavy infantry. They are 6 health, 5 cohesion units, and they have range drill and disorganized. The Imperial Guard is the only range drill infantry for the Ottomans, meaning that they make an obvious inclusion in terms of giving them the rifled breech loaders. This does mean that they are quite expensive a unit, but it does mean that the Ottomans can actually have units that can deal significant amounts of damage at range, which is something that the early period Ottomans didn't really have. When you build around the Imperial Guard, your build does change due to their high cost, as your swarms might be a little bit weaker overall, but it does give a more de a deeper uh, and more interesting dynamic in terms of how the Ottomans can potentially play. They still can't do quality, especially compared to many other nations, but they can punch a little bit more at range, uh, giving them some options. Then, there's no new cavalry units, and in artillery we get two new options. The first one is the Gatling Gun. This is a 4 health, 2 cohesion, rapid fire artillery that contains anti-personnel, breech loading, disorganized, and breakable. Now, the Gatling gun is a very interesting tool within the Ottomans roster. Gatling Machine guns are very, very powerful in terms of their impact due to the fact that they do not have cumbersome. This means that a Gatling gun is able to move and shoot in the same turn. This is also notable when you can use them on roads because that unit can actually move two spaces and then shoot and fire, which is potentially very, very powerful. Uh, 
you can move this unit potentially right next to an enemy, anti-personnel kicks in and you shoot twice, you can practically wipe out units in one volley with a Gatling gun uh, if they're not careful. Now, the Disorganized and Breakable actually do factor in a bit more here, as the Gatling gun has to play a bit more aggressively compared to most other artillery options. This means that the Gatling gun is often a very glass cannon unit. Often it will have one turn where it will go in and deal a ton of damage. And then after that, if you're unable to immediately pull it out, it will probably get shot at and killed. So one must be careful with it, but for its cost of 130, it's very, very cheap. And then we also get a very interesting unit in the four pound Krupp artillery. This is a Prussian artillery piece, and is their normal artillery piece that is just given to the Ottomans. It is 6 health, 2 cohesion, and 3 range, and sports cumbersome, breach loading, range drill, and disorganized. This Krupp artillery is actually a very powerful tool. Breach loading and range drill means that they deal massive amounts of damage, a whopping 6 if they connect both shots. Combine that with the fact that Disorganized helps to lower their cost, and it is possible for the Ottomans to usually bring these in and have a substantial impact, using them in a manner similar to the Gatling gun, uh, but just with a little bit slower in terms of setup. The low cost, though, makes it a lot easier to fit these into builds, especially due to the swarming nature of the Ottomans, meaning that you often are going to be bogging the enemy down, and then if timed correctly, the Krupp artillery can move into position, then your units move out of the way, and you unload, unload a massive amount of damage into a core unit. So, how does one build the Ottomans in the late period? Well, due to the fact that you have some very new units that offer actual range drill, you can build the Ottomans in a bit of a quality-based manner. Leaning a bit more into just kind of overwhelming the enemy with a larger amount of your range drill combined with your still somewhat spammy nature. This is best shown off by the Krupp Artilleries, which can deal a ton of damage while you swarm them with line infantry and Bashi Bazooks, and you even have potentially a couple Imperial Guards offering some ranged firepower as well. It is also possible to forego the Imperial Guards and just lean much heavier into the Bashi Bazook infantry, which gives you a much greater swarming potential, but does have the downside of, again, no heavy infantry. But it is possible that this is another viable build. You can also go with a more standard build, which simply leans into essentially just spamming out as many Bashi Bazooks as possible. Alongside having access to a single line infantry, or a single red if infantry, this is sheer numbers in terms of its units, but gives you just, well, that overwhelming numbers. Or you could easily go forego this and get in, in a cavalry unit alongside this build. The Ottomans are generally quite open in their builds, uh, and either one of these can work, or a mishmash of them. You might want to run a Krupp gun within this infantry spam build, or you may want to make room for two Krupp guns and use stuff like that, or... You might want to cut a little bit and run a single Imperial Guard. It's a pretty flexible nation in how you build it. Generally, the core is just Bashi Bazooks, and then you have to choose which of the Turkish line infantry, Egyptian line infantry, or Zouaves you want as your line unit, and then what unit you're going to have supporting them, whether that's Imperial Guards, the Krupp artillery, Gatling guns, or one of the numerous shock cavalry. You have a lot of different options. And it's overall a very interesting faction. Uh, to round this video off, a couple tips I have for the Ottomans are... Number one, understand that you're going to take losses, and that is completely okay. Most of your units are expendable, and are not crucial to your strategy. Unlike a nation like, say, France, who usually is, harbor, is usually putting a lot of faith in keeping a couple core units around... The Ottomans do not have to really worry about that. Their only real concern is just 
pinning the enemy down through things like melee charges or overwhelming numbers, and in the end of the day, just out trading. If the enemy is forced to trade one unit for one of your units, you're going to be winning. And it is a very solid strategy that if you can if you have to sacrifice something like a bashi in order to secure a kill absolutely do it the biggest weakness and the thing you must avoid as the ottomans is getting into ranged shootouts with the enemy the lack of range drill on most of your units alongside the traits like disorganized and breakable means that your units are just going to f die quicker than the enemy in ranged combat and although you can do it for maybe a short while, you should really put focus on getting close and meleeing the enemy to death through overwhelming numbers. And with that, we are at the end of this guide. Hopefully this video is useful to you. Again, if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Is there a nation you want me to cover next? Uh, and I do have to say that there probably will be a bit of a delay between any future guides coming out as pretty much every other nation is going to be receiving a couple new units. Uh, this was shown recently, uh, but some units, some nations like the United States of America only has, I think, 16 units in its roster at the moment. And compared to something like France, who has 19 they are just a bit limited in numbers, and as such, they need to be, they're getting new units to bring everybody up to the number that, like, the French and the Ottomans have. So, I don't want these guides to become outdated by simply facing, like, the problem that, oh, there's this new unit that's coming out that's going to completely redefine how you build this nation in the early period, or the late period, or whatever. So there will be a bit of delay on these. Uh, as those units start to come out, then I'll continue making these guides. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be doing some other content for Fire and Maneuver and a few other strategy games. So again, make sure to like and subscribe and stay around for that. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and have a good day.